Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Usman and you are watching Dentistry with Dr. Usman. In today's video, our topic is Trauma from Occlusion. First of all, we will discuss about what is occlusion. Occlusion is defined as it is the relationship between the maxillary and the mandibular teeth when they are in contact. Means look at this picture, it is the maxillary teeth and this is the mandibular teeth when they are in contact. Right now these pictures showing the teeth are in contact, means mouth is closed. So the relationship between the upper teeth and the lower teeth, means maxillary teeth and the mandibular teeth is called the occlusion. But today our topic is trauma from occlusion. Now look at this picture, this is your maxilla and this is your mandibular and this is your maxillary teeth. And this is your maxillary teeth. And these are your mandibular teeth. Right now, these are in contact. Means they are joining each other. This relationship is called occlusion. When the upper, when the maxillary teeth and the mandibular teeth are in proper intercuspation, it's called occlusion. And the teeth are in contact. The first occlusal force is applied to the teeth, then to the alveolar bone and from the alveolar bone to the basal bone. This is called basal bone, this is called maxilla and these are the mandible. So, one thing also important to remember here is that our maxilla doesn't move. Maxilla is fixed but our mandible moves. So, the when mandible puts forces to the maxilla, then the forces first goes to the alveolar bone, then from the alveolar bone to the basal bone of the maxilla. In this topic, First of all, we need to discuss adaptive capacity of periodontium. Adaptive capacity of periodontium from occlusion is that when the certain forces apply to the tooth or tooth surfaces or the around structure of means periodontium. Periodontium has the natural capability to adapt the different forces when we bite, chew and eat different things. Periodontium means that this structure of the tooth around the tooth structure is called periodontium. The periodontium of the tooth has the is called periodontium. All of these structure beside the tooth is called periodontium. So our periodontium has the natural ability to adapt the forces when the force is applied. The men in regards to chewing something, eating something or talking. But keep in mind our periodontium has the limited ability to adapt the forces. If the forces exceed the adaptive capacity of the periodontium, then the pathologic conditions can arise or the trauma from occlusion can, can occur. If the occlusal forces increases from the adaptive capacity of periodontium, then the injury will occur into your periodontium. <laughs> now let's discuss about the various factors on which the adaptive capacity of periodontium depends. Number one, magnitude. Now let's talk about what is magnitude. So magnitude is defined as when the occlusal forces increase the adaptive capacity then we, and we can notice in histological pattern the widening of pedial fibers and an increase in number of periodontal fibers and the width of periodontal fibers. Now let's discuss about the direction. Second most important factor is direction of the forces. Direction means when the force is applied in different direction. Means the force is applied from lateral direction or on the axial direction and on the rotatory direction of the tooth. Medial fibers will rearrange itself in the periodontium when the forces is applied from the axial direction, lateral direction or rotational direction. Second important factor is duration. Now let's discuss about the duration. So the duration factor affects the tooth is that when we are applying the constant forces to the tooth at constant excessive occlusal forces to the tooth there is a bone resorption will occur. And second important thing in duration is that when the intermittent means when you when the forces applied slowly slowly it's called intermittent force in the intermittent force bone formation occurs as in the orthodontic treatment when the intermittent forces will apply to the tooth and we see the bone formation from around the periodontium so in the duration factor if the forces are constant the bone resorption will occur if the forces are intermittent then the bone formation will occur now let's discuss about the fourth and last 
simply is that frequency is defined as more the occlusal forces means more number of time the occlusal forces applied to the tooth surface the more the pedontium will destroy it more the pedontium will uh, goes to the pathological condition if we apply constant strike to the tooth surface co frequently means frequency is more in number then then the destruction of pedontium will occur so my you have the concept of trauma from occlusion now let's discuss about the definition of a trauma from occlusion by the glicksman when the occlusal forces exceed the adaptive capacity of pedontium the pedontal injury results it this definition is given by the glicksman it mean if if the forces is applied to the tooth structure means there are forces applied means if the forces is applied to the tooth structure then the adaptive capacity of periodontium will adapt to the adaptive capacity of the tooth structure but if the capacity if the forces exceed means exceed the adaptive capacity of periodontium then the injury or destruction of periodontal periodontium will occur because naturally in our periodontium by god there is a adaptive capacity if the constant pressure is applied to the periodontium in irregular manner or the constant excessive pressure then the periodontium and the pedal ligaments lose its adaptive capacity and it goes into destruction or into injury and this energy is termed as trauma from occlusion now keep in mind trauma from occlusion can also be termed as occlusal trauma traumatogenic occlusion or periodontal trauma you may have the question in your exam related to these topic or in these name so you need to describe the trauma from occlusion in your question describe the trauma from occlusion if you have any regarding of these topics in your exam now let's move to the classification of trauma from occlusion trauma from occlusion can be acute or chronic number 2 secondary or primary or combined now let discuss about one by one classification acute or chronic acute means the trauma which is onset and duration means acute can be arise from the biting the hard structure which may produce the excessive force into your periodontium or due to the excessive forces by clenching your teeth regularly chronic in chronic condition you can assume the the chronic factor of trauma from occlusion is that when we are in orthodontic treatment and our teeth are in not in regular position let's look at this picture these teeth are arranged in a proper alignment it have the distorted alignment of tooth means their teeth are not in regular alignment these are their teeth are more forward backward or in rotated state in this situation the forces is continuously means chronically jo hai applied to the periodontium excessively in this condition the periodontium will destroy and injury will occur and whitening of pedial fiber and resorption of bone will occur and slowly slowly tooth starts to lose its its strength primary occlusal trauma is defined as in which the length of periodontium is same means the length of periodontium will stay in that area is called when the length of periodontium will stay in that area not reduce to that not reduce to this level it's called primary occlusal trauma and primary occlusal trauma is caused by the high fillings prosthesis abutments and different orthodontics in which the forces is intermittent and slowly slowly forces is apply to the periodontium secondary occlusal trauma there is reduce the height of periodontium to this level means the that level will reduce these structure will reduce of the periodontium reduce to this level in the secondary Tra secondary trauma from occlusion. Keep in mind the difference between the primary and secondary is that in primary occlusion uh, from trauma is that the forces is applied, but the length of periodontium is intact, not reduced, but only the widening and arrangement of the pedal fiber chains. In secondary trauma from occlusion is that the length of the periodontium reduced to this level. and the, and the forces are not excessive this can be caused due to the injury in tissues this trauma from occlusion is caused by the previously if you have any disease any differences any problem in your periodontium through which the length of your periodontium decreased so the basic difference between the primary and secondary trauma from occlusion is that in primary 
there is excessive force from occlusion and uh, widening of pedial ligament but in secondary there is loss and reduce the height of periodontium and the forces are intermittent means forces are not excessive and last we have the combined in combined condition we have reduced length of periodontium till here and also we have the highest occlusal forces in secondary there is no high occlusal forces in primary there are high, high occlusal forces but not the reduced height of periodontium but in combined there is reduced height of periodontium and also there is high occlusal forces through which the trauma from occlusion is caused now let's discuss about the sign and symptoms of trauma from occlusion first of all signs and symptoms are described into two categories number one clinically and radiographic changes in radiographic changes we will describe as the histologic changes but first let's discuss about the clinical observation of occlusal from trauma patient now when the patient is coming to you with the trauma from occlusion you may see in their mouth there is a bleeding or reduce the height of their gingiva may be seen from mostly complaints about when they are chewing there is a pain in their tooth and in their gums so let's discuss about the histologic changes in histologic changes we have three stages number one stage is defined as the injury number stage two is defined as repair stage three is remodeling now let's discuss these stages in detail one by one first of all we will discuss about the stage one in injury so in the stage of injury tooth is exposed to the occlusal forces excessive occlusal forces so the periodontium can per periodontium tries to withstand the occlusal forces but so the periodontium tries to withstand the so the periodontium tries to withstand the occlusal forces but if the forces is exceed the adaptive capacity of periodontium then the periodontium will distribute its forces into the other tissue which cause the widening of pedal fiber and rearrangement of fiber as we discussed when we were discussing about the frequency and magnitude factors now let's discuss about the second stage of repair in repair we have the thinning of bone and the thinning of the trabeculae of the bone because as we discussed in first stage when the when the excessive forces will apply to the fused periodontium will disperse its forces into other tissues and bone resorption will occur when in second stage when the bone resorption will occur the trabeculae will also the decrease in size this process is also called buttressing of the bone so in second stage the important point is that we find the buttressing of bone in second stage of histologic changes in trauma from occlusion so this is very important process of buttressing bone formation when the trauma from occlusion occurs now in second stage buttressing bone formation is of two type number one is that the central buttressing bone formation and number two is peripheral buttressing bone formation in central buttressing bone formation the bone formation will occur at the jaw level that is around the tooth structure the bone formation will occur means the mean the lingual and facial surfaces of the tooth now let's discuss about the adaptive remodeling of the periodontium which is the third stage in the histologic changes when the trauma from occlusion will occur now in third stage when the trauma from occlusion persists means after the repair stage the trauma is continuous when the forces is continuously applied not reduced then the periodontium remodel itself to adapt the excessive forces from occlusion and in stage 3 we found three significant findings number one there is a thickening of the pedial fibers number two is the angular def you will find the angular defects in the bone if you find radiographically or histologically number three is that you may have tooth mobility in your mouth because the forces you are applied on the tooth surface with continuously applying and not reducing so these are the classical features of trauma from occlusion now let's sum up our topic first of all we describe 
trauma from occlusion, occlusion and also known as abusal trauma, traumatogenic occlusion and periodontal trauma. Then we describe the adaptive capacity of periodontium. Then we describe the factors which affect the adaptive capability of periodontium. Secondly, we describe the classification. Number one, acute and chronic classification. Number two, primary, secondary or combined. Then after that, we discuss signs and symptoms of trauma from occlusion and in signs and symptoms we describe the clinical symptoms and radiographic finding histologic find histologic differences also and histologic changes we have three stages stage one which is injury stage two which is repair and stage three which is remodeling of adaptive capacity of periodontium so this explanation also helps you in your exam if you have question regarding the trauma from occlusion in your med exams or your final exams or OSCE or the sport or the sporting in your medical school. Our today's video occlusion from trauma ends here. I hope you will understand this topic and this video will help you in your studies and in your exam. See you in next video with the new topic. Till that, Allah Hafiz. Take care.